Hello, everyone. This is the lecture for section 2.3, uh, volumes of revolution, cylindrical shells. So uh, this method is the harder one of the three methods uh, to find um, uh, sort of a volume, OK? Um, the theory is just about as simple, except that there is a little bit of a modification here and there. Uh, OK, um, and it has to do with cylindrical shells this time. OK, so let me build up with the theory just using our basic geometry. Right. And then we'll build up to the more complex stuff and how it turns into an integral. OK. Um, the idea for um, the idea for how we build our integral is just the same as when we did washer method and disk method. The only difference is we're doing cylindrical shells. So. Um, the one thing that we're going to need um, is, uh, well, let's first start with just the basic geometry that we're going to need, okay? Um, as the method suggests, we're going to be using cylindrical shells. So uh, picture sort of, uh, you know, soda cans, okay? Uh, and we're going to be making soda cans that sort of start out really small and grow to something really big, right? We add up all of those... Um, we add up all of those uh, soda cans together and we get a volume, okay? That's sort of, you know, really quick, the idea, right? But now let's build up the theory. So the one geometry rule that we're going to need, right, is um, uh, it's not going to be this one, but it's going to be the uh, sort of uh, the buildup for it. So if we want the volume of, let's say, a nice little slab like this, right, uh, then the volume of this thing, whoa, wrong color. And the volume of this thing, right, is going to be some length, right, times some height, times a little, if you guys take a look right here, it's going to be a little sort of width or a depth, right? So it's going to be a length times a height times a width, that little piece right here, basically the thickness, right? Now, um, picture this, if you will, right? Suppose you grabbed this end, this entire end right here, right? Spun it around and stuck it to this other end over here. Okay. Uh, then you have a, a cylinder, something like it looks like this right here, right? So what ends up happening now, right, is our width, right? Our width right here, right, uh, is going to be that thickness. It's going to be the thickness of the uh, of uh, our cylindrical shell, right? The height, so basically from sort of right here all the way down. So we get to the base right here. That's still going to be our H, right? That's going to be our little H. And actually, let me call it big H because that's what we were doing before, right? And since we're looping it sort of in a circle, right, the length now, we need this thing right here. It's going to be some radius R, right? So the volume here, right, turns into uh, 2 pi R. That is going to take care of this length right here, the, the length that goes all the way around, right? Times our height, times our height, times uh, our width, right? So this is the volume of a cylindrical shell, right? Just one, right? Just one that we just sort of take out separately, all right? So. This is the theory that we're going to end up using here, OK? So now, how does this fit for finding our volumes? So let me go down here. Uh, there's a blank space here. Now, uh, please give, you know, uh, don't judge me. Um, I think I've mentioned this multiple times now. Uh, one of the things that you learn to do in Calc 2 is you learn how to draw and you learn how to draw really good. Um, I am on an online, I'm on like a, on my desktop computer. So my lines may not be exactly perfect. I'm trying, I'm trying, okay? I'm trying, there we go. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm slap down an X and a Y. I'm gonna label which ones I'm gonna consider X and which ones I'm considering Y. Okay, so this is going to be my x variable, right? And this is going to be my y variable. So your x, y plane is sort of like the one that's standing up, right? And I'm adding this third axis here just so that I can give sort of like a depth, okay? 
Okay. Now, here comes the construction. Okay. Suppose, right, we have a, um, a continuous f of x, non-negative, over an interval a, b, right? So I'm going to go ahead and draw my, my uh, I'm going to draw my function here. Okay, I'm going to do it in purple. I'm going to go ahead and do, there we go, okay? And I want it between some value a and some value b, okay? So then that means on the other side, over here on my x, axis, the negative x axis, it is going to be a negative a, there's going to be a negative b. These aren't going to be too useful for us. It's just to show where they end up going. Uh, so then here's my a, or here's my f of x. Okay, so this is f of x right here. Okay. And suppose we do a partition, right? So I can still grab my a, b here and sort of partition them up, right? Uh, let me do that one a little. Let's go whoosh and whoosh. there we go, okay? Uh, and in this case, right, let's say we want to revolve this shape about the y-axis. So we are trying to spin this like this around here. Okay, we're trying to spin it around the y-axis. So let me go ahead and sort of cordon off the, the uh, let me, that's a bit too thick. Bear with me here, bear with me. I'm trying to be as precise as possible. Let me zoom in really quick so I can be a little bit more precise there. So I'm trying to cordon off this thing right here. So this is the shape that I want to revolve around the Y axis, okay? So let me redraw this strip right here so that it looks a little better. It's gonna go something like that, right? So I want to revolve that shape around, right? So I'm gonna use my blue again. Don't judge me, don't judge me, please don't judge me. And I want you guys to see the shape that's going to sort of take shape here. Whoa. I was doing a... Oh, no. Thank goodness for undo. Too much. There we go. Hopefully, let me do this bottom end really quick. Hopefully, you see the shape that's there, right? Um, I know it's really hard to see it, but let me see if I can highlight it with a dark, a nice dark blue here. Uh, too big. Let's go ahead and make that a little tinier there. There we go. Maybe let's go. Yeah. Basically, this shape right here. Hopefully, hopefully you guys see what's going on here. Let's shade that thing in right there. There we go. So you have this little, it looks like a sharply edged donut, right? With that hole in the middle, right? And that's sort of on purpose, OK? Um, this is the shape that we want the integral for. This is the shape that we want the integral for. Okay. Uh, this is the volume. This is sort of like the shape that we're going to be looking at, right? So now let me go ahead and delete the filling in so we can do a little bit more calculus now. Um, not what I wanted. Now we'll have to leave that there. Okay. So what I want everybody to see now is this. Um, let me actually get rid of the shape, really, because what I really want to concentrate on is the uh, the cylindrical shell that's going to be used, right? So the cylindrical shell that we're going to be using, right, is this one. I'm going to take a random one because we can go ahead and do that just for sort of 
uh, illustrative purposes, right? Here's our cylindrical shell. There's a, right? And then, so same thing's going to happen on this side. There's going to be a, you know, a slice that's missing there, right? Uh, and it's going to, I'm going to go ahead and try to connect these dots like this. That's the inside one. This is the outside one, right? Uh, the outside one here. And then the outside or the inside one here like this. Right, and there's a height there, and I'm gonna go ahead and outside to inside. There we go. So hopefully you guys see. Let me see if I can draw it a little better so it actually looks like a like a cylinder. So that's gonna stay there. I'm gonna dot this line instead. I'm gonna. Okay, um, hopefully you guys see what's going on here. And then let me do this one here on the outside. Beyond. There we are. And let me dot that one to show that's the inside. There we go. Okay, that's, I think, I think that's going to be the best thing I'm going to be able to do. Okay, uh, hopefully you guys, now I'm going to actually shade in what the cylinder is going to look like. And I'm going to try to do it so that it shows Sort of like a cylindery shape, if that makes any sense. So that's the outer lip. If you take a look at a you know a soda can, right? That's the outside outer lip. Okay. And then the rest of it, right? All the all this all the way down is sort of like the rest of the can. Hopefully this makes sense. Hopefully the picture is clear enough. I really hope the picture is clear enough. If you need more sort of, um, if you need a, a better illustration, I know the book has a pretty darn good one, right? So here's our sort of um, cylinder that we're going to be playing with, right? We're going to have a bunch of these cylinders, right? They're concentric cylinders, so they start off small and go big or big, go small, right? Um, they're just sort of cylinders in, inside of cylinders, right? We're gonna grab the volume of all of these cylinders, add them up, that's gonna be our volume, okay? So the anatomy of one of these cylinders, right? Uh, hopefully you guys can see how this is gonna work out. Um, let me go ahead and use the pink here. We know that this width, this little strip right here is going to be our delta X because it's part of a partition, right? Uh, it's going to be a specific width, right? Okay. Uh, we can tell that there's a height here, right? That height is going to be dictated by F of X I star, right? It's going to be dictated, dictated by some F, uh, some X value that's within this partition right here, right? Okay, and then the last thing that's left is we need a radius. And we can tell that this radius this way, right? That uh, radius right there is going to be, and I'm gonna sort of do this right here, there we go, is gonna be uh, the R there, right? Is going to be whatever that X value is, right? Some X sub I. And actually I should have done it the other way, let me back up here. Let's go ahead and do it this way, so we can get to this point right here. So this right here, whoa, this radius right here, R, is going to be given by X I star, some X uh, value within that one partition that we're choosing out, right? That's going to get us our cylinder. So the volume of this cylinder, of this cylinder, the blue one in particular, right? And the volume of this cylinder is going to be given by 2 pi xi star times f of xi star times delta x. Okay, hopefully you guys see that. Like I said, if you need better a, a better illustration of it, uh, I highly suggest you go to the textbook. Uh, I'm trying my best here. Okay. Um, 
So that's where this term comes from, right here. Okay, and as we did in uh, previous sections, right? Uh, if we grab all of these uh, f of x, uh, so sorry, v of x i's, right? If we grab all of these smaller volumes of all of these cylindrical shells, and then just add them all up, we get our volume. We get the entire volume of the shape. Okay. Uh, the next thing that was left after that, which was what we've been doing sort of uh, since the beginning of this, of this semester, right, when we started learning about integrals, is uh, if we make those little partitions, if we make these partitions down here, if we make those partitions smaller and smaller and smaller, right, uh, then we get a better, a better and better approximation of our uh, of the volume of the shape. Okay, and when we do that, we get our integral. Okay, so if you guys take a notice right here, right, that's still the 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 expression for one cylinder, right? I'm adding them all up, right, from i equal one to n. So there's going to be n different partitions, right? And then I take the limit as n goes to infinity. The second we take the limit as n goes to infinity, that turns our thing into an integral. Okay, and notice how the shape, notice how the formulation of the integrand is still the same sort of as the uh, formulation for our volume, right? This little strip right here. So this, right, all of that ends up being all of this. Okay. Awesome. All right, so now, how do we freaking do this for real, right? Uh, let's go ahead and take uh, an example, okay? So uh, this one, uh, a big apology here. I forgot a negative. So there should be a negative uh, after the, uh, before the 5x, x minus 1, x plus 1. So just make sure you stick the negative in there, okay? Um, suppose we find want to find the solid of revolution right, formed by the uh, revolving the region bounded by that thing over uh, 0, 1 about the y-axis. So we want to spin this this way. So we want to grab this shape. We know this is the region that we really care about. Uh, we want this region right here. I highlighted in pink, actually. We want this region, all of this, right, all of it. And we want to spin it around the y-axis. So we want to do this. Okay. Okay. So let's get that started now, right? So what I'm going to do, and I hope, and I expect everybody, uh, when you guys do this uh, for the quick checks, you at least attempt, okay? I'm not judging, you know, this is an art class. Uh, I'm not judging uh, your... Um, uh, your picture, right? But I do want it to demonstrate uh, all the important parts, okay? Um, what I want to start with first with this problem is I want to draw the shape. I want to be able to at least somehow, you know, slap down a visual representation of what I'm going to be playing with, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and do exactly that. Let me go ahead and uh, I'm going to uh, do a shape. I'm going to draw an X and a Y axis here so that we all and we didn't want it in pink. There we go. I'm going to put another one down. I'm going to put it maybe like that. There we go. Okay, so that's just X and Y axis, right? Just so that I, I can get my bearings down, right? I'm going to extend this one a little bit. Oh, come on. There we go. Okay, and I'm going to make the... Uh, uh, uh. Not what I wanted. Come on. There we go. Okay, so I have my x and y axis down, right? And what I'm going to do, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I know what the shape is going to be. I know this is the shape that I want, right? So I'm going to go ahead and do 0 to 1. I'm going to put negative 1, negative 1 out here just as a reference, just so that I know what's going on, right? And I'm actually going to put it a little closer right there. That's cool. Okay. And I'm going to draw the, the region sort of. I'm going to draw it in blue for now. So I know this thing is going to go like this, and then it's going to drop down like, whoa, almost so close. Up. 
like that, and then there's going to be a dip like that. There we go. I'm going to do the same thing over here. It's going to go up, and there's going to be a dip. Whoa. Like I said, I'm not going to be, I'm trying to draw it as best as possible so you guys can see what uh, the shape is supposed to be, right? Uh, attempt your best to draw the shape as close as possible. There we go. I think that, that'll do. Okay. And I want to revolve this around the Y axis, right? So like I said, I want to spin this this way. It's going to go like this, right? Now, here's the shape. I'm going to go ahead and sort of connect the tops. Uh, oops, wrong button, wrong button. Um, I wanted the undo. There we go. I'm going to connect the tops a little bit like this. And then the bottoms like this. And then mm, something like that. So if you take a look at it, right, uh, the shape that we are sort of playing around with here, I'm actually going to draw it in, highlight it in blue, right, is all of this. A pi picture like a picture like a mound of dirt, right? And you sort of scoop out the middle. You, you sort of scoop out the the hump in the middle, right? Best sort of description I can give you. You have this cone little shape like inside, right? And that's supposed to be sort of like empty, right? Okay, so we have our shape. This is the thing that we are going to be finding the volume for, right? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sort of demonstrate the the one uh, cylinder that we're gonna be sort of concentrating on, right? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to draw this a little thick. I'm going to go ahead and draw it uh, thick so that you guys can see what the cylinder is going to look like. Uh, I'm going to make it like about right here. There we go. Yeah, that sounds good. So our cylinder, actually I should have done it a different color. Let's do it this bright pink. We can all see it. There we go. So here's our cylinder, right? Well, at least those are our sides, right? Let's go ahead and draw what the cylinder is sort of going to look like. Our soda can. It's going to be sort of like this, right? Hopefully you guys see what this is looking like. There we go. There's our soda can. Okay. There's a couple of things that I want to point out. You guys see, there's a reason why I drew this a little thick, right? The thickness that I gave this thing, right, this soda can, this is going to be our DX, okay? That's going to be our DX. We can see that this thing has a height. So this height right here, right, that's going to be our height. And if you can tell from the other side, right, this is also going to be the same height. The height is dictated by our function. It's going to be dictated by our function f of x, right? And the last thing that's missing is basically our radius, the distance from here out, right? And that is dictated, our radius is going to be x, right? So notice how the construction works when we draw these things, right? Whoa, there we go. Notice how the construction works when we draw these, OK? It really helps out to draw it and be able to sort of slap down uh, what your cylinder is supposed to look like as close as possible. Try to, this is one of the spots in calculus two, at least, where you really want to be meticulous, OK? Uh, it doesn't got to be perfect, but make it as clear as possible, uh, at least for you know each one of you. Don't try to cut corners on the picture itself. Try to be as precise as possible, OK? Because the preciseness will help you properly write down what you need to for the function itself, for the integral itself, OK? OK, so we have everything we want here, right? So in order to find this volume, right, we need the integral. Let me draw a smaller integral. The integral, we know it's from 0 to 1. OK, of 2 pi times x, which is cool, right, times our f of x. This is where we got to do our minus 5x uh, 
x minus 1, x plus 1, dx. So this is the integral we need to find. And that's a multiplication before. People get confused. There we go. OK, I'm going to reduce this a little bit. Integral. Uh, what am I going to reduce? Uh, there's a 2 pi. That's a constant. I can pop that out. And there's a minus 5 times all the rest of the stuff. That's also a constant. I can pop that out. So what's going to pop out now is negative 10 pi times the integral from 0 to 1. Uh, and all of this stuff, the x, another x, let me actually underline them, the x here, x here, x minus 1, x plus 1, that reduces down to x squared, x squared minus 1, dx. Okay, and if you expand this, get something nice. Uh, whoops, forgot the negative 10 pi. Integral from 0 to 1 of x to the fourth minus x squared dx. That we can integrate, right? And when you integrate it, uh, you get minus 10 pi uh, x to the fifth over 5 minus x to the third over 3 evaluated at 0 to 1. Okay, if you do the math out here, uh, negative 10 pi, uh, two over 15, if you do the common denominators and everything for this thing, and what you reduce down to is four pi over three. And we are done. This is our final answer. If we uh, go through all the work and, uh, do all the arithmetic outright, this is what we get, OK? Um, our integral calculator still works here, uh, which is what I want to do. I want to bring this down and show you guys the integral. So let me go ahead and erase that, delete all that stuff. We're about to get to that one in a second. I want to do a split screen here. So we wanted to find this integral right here. I can put in any one of them. So I'm going to go ahead and put in the minus 10 pi uh, x to the fourth minus x squared, right? So we're finding that integral. So basically, we're doing this one right here. Let me highlight the one that I'm sort of concerning myself with here, this one right here. That's the one that we're taking care of. And we need it from 0 to 1. 0 to 1, 4.1887, right? And if you compute that, uh, if you actually compute 4 pi divided by 3, this is it. OK? So you can double check your work still with the, um, uh, with the definite integral calculator if you need it, OK? All right, what's coming up first for everybody is your first quick checks. Uh, there's a reason why this one's the most complicated one. It's because everybody gets lost. Um, when you're doing your quick check, let me put all of them here. When you're doing your quick check, like I said, be meticulous as you possibly can. Be as exact as you possibly can, OK? Uh, the better you do it now, right, uh, the better it'll get, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll improve your picture uh, over the semester, right? And uh, hopefully by the end of the semester, right, you'll be able to draw them pretty nicely, OK? They will help you formulate the integral properly, OK? Uh, so uh, as I did in the example before, make sure you uh, give me the region, then tr attempt to draw the shape somehow, right? And then give me the, the mathematics for it after that, OK? Cool. Moving on, I want to keep going here, OK? Um, whoa. Let me scroll down. There we go. Uh, moving on, uh, just like we had um, integrals that were based on dx when we were doing the x-axis, right? Uh, we also have a formulation for the exact same thing, 
uh, when we want to do it over the y axis, over the sorry, over uh, the y variable, right? The theory doesn't change, right? So notice how this is still the same as from when we did it with the x, right? We add up all the soda cans together, right? And all of them collectively become an approximation for our uh, volume, right? And the second we start making those partitions uh, infinitely small, we have a integral. So notice how the integral for when we do it with respect to y, right, is uh, the same. It's exactly the same. Okay. Okay. So up until now, we have three different methods to do uh, to find volume. Two of them we did in the last section, and now we're covering the very last one, the, the shell method. Okay. So. <clears throat> What I want to do is sort of show how each one of these shapes look like and how they work. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and slap down a X and a Y here. And I want it in. Come on. I think it's uh, okay. Let's erase you again. Shape. Uh, I'm going to slap down an X. I'm going to slap down, and I'm actually going to do an X over here. Right, let me move it off there for a little bit. There we go. Uh, and a Y. Okay, so the first one was a disk method, right? The disk method uh, dealt with just any shape, right? Let me, oops, there we go. Uh, the shell method had to do with just any shape. So I can have a, you know, a function, right? And let's say I wanted to do it from A to B, right? So I my shape was going to be this thing, right? This sort of wonky looking cylinder thing, right? So it was going to go all the way down to the same amount. And let me actually do that down here. I'm going to, don't judge me. Don't judge me. Right? So this is the shape. This is the sort of the region that we were going to, revolve around the x-axis, right? Okay, so our shape for this was actually going to look like this. It's going to be a, I don't know what you would call this, just a, like a cylindrical blob, really, right? So I'm, I'm trying here. There we go. Ah, that's better. Here's our cylindrical blob, right? And the idea was we were doing it by disk method, right? Uh, there was going to be a disk. There's going to be a disk in between here. There's going to be a little sort of a delta x, and then we were going to uh, basically a frisbee in the middle, right? Where uh, we were doing it based off of this area. If you guys remember, right? This area right here, right? It was the pi times r squared, right? And that r was dictated by our function f of x, right? So this ended up being pi times f of x squared, right? And our depth, right, the little thickness here, that right there was going to be r dx, right? Oops, dx, dx. Uh, which ended up being our delta x, right? That's how we constructed this volume, right? So similarly, when we did washer method, the washer method was mostly for stuff that had a hole in it, right? So I'm going to slap down another x and another y axis here, okay? So we had this this time, right? So here's f of x. Here's line, right? So I'm going to do another line right here. And my squiggle. Don't judge me. Don't judge me. I'm trying here. A to B. Right? Uh, we were going to revolve this strip right here. Let me drop that down there. So the the little strip that we're going to do now is this, that bit right there, right? We're going to revolve that around, 
I'm going to do the same thing down below. I'm going to sort of dot, 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 dot down here, dot, 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 dot down there. We can see our shape coming to form here. Right? <clears throat> Excuse me. You guys see the shape coming to coming to form. Whoa. Oh, it went into shape. Okay. Uh, try your best. Try your best. I'm not going to. I do want to see an attempt, though. I will say that. I do want to see an attempt. Okay. And this is going to be sort of like inside. And this is going to be another inside. And then there's going to be the outside that goes on. There we go. You guys hopefully see this shape. It's basically the same looking blob from our disk method, right? It's just got a hole through it, okay? If you remember this one, right? Uh, the tall one, the big radius was our f of x, right? And then the small little radius was our g of x, right? The idea, right, is we still needed this, and I'm gonna draw sort of like a washer inside with the missing hole. Hopefully you guys see what's going on. And then I'm going to add that thickness there. There we go. That looks pretty good, huh? OK. So remember, that thickness, right, is still going to be our dx, which is, you know, back from our construction was our delta x is going to be a thickness uh for our washer correct okay um that thickness was going to be multiplied by if you guys take a look there's and hopefully i can do this uh let me do blue yeah there we go just trying to shade in the sort of a face of my washer if you guys see what i'm doing here My face of my washer there. Yeah. Okay. And the way that that was going to translate, right? Uh, we still needed, just like we did before, we needed an area here, right? And the way that we sort of constructed it was it was going to be a pi. Let me do it a little smaller here. So the area for that strip was going to be some pi times some big R squared minus some little r squared, right? And it turned out, let me move this out of the way, uh, because of how everything was assigned, right? Pi, it's going to be the big function. If you take a look at um, basically from here up, right? That is f of x. And then from middle to the sort of inside radius, that's g of x. So we had here f of x squared minus g of x squared. That was our area, right? So that's how we got this formulation right here, right above it, right? Just like we got from the disk method, right? No, if you guys see that, right? So now, shell method. This one's the one that feels a little complicated, and for good reason, it is. So uh, let me go ahead and draw again. I'm going to insert same idea. Um, no, not that. One day that will be useful, but not today. Uh, that there. There we go. Okay. Actually, I'm going to move this down a little bit. Yeah. All right, something went wrong with that one. Let's get rid of him and let's draw in another x axis here. Yeah, that's good enough. All right. So uh, the new system, right? The new method, shell method, right? I'm going to go ahead and draw a function here. I'm going to draw, like, let's say that, right? And I still want to do over a to b, right? 
So same thing happens in the other direction, right? And now we have whatever shape this sort of creates. So dropping that down, dropping that down, dropping this down, dropping this down, right? Hopefully you guys see. This picture might be clearer than the other one. So this is sort of like the, the shape that I want to find the volume for, right? And then this sort of connects right here like that. And then this is going to be around there. Hopefully you guys see that shape. It's got like a little squiggle on the top of it and it's flat on the bottom, okay? And it's missing that hole uh, from that distance from zero to A, right? So now, I'm going to go ahead and do the same exact construction here. And I'm going to sort of thicken that up a little bit. I have this as my, as the cylinder that I'm going to be playing around with, right? And this one, I'm actually going to darken in. I'm going to sort of add some squiggles in here, right? And then it's going to be, let's do that a little nicer, yeah? And I'm going to go ahead and do a, There we go. I'm going to grab that, give it a sort of a thickness, and then there we go. Uh, it's going out a little too wide there. There we go. You guys see that? I have a feeling this is much better than the picture that I provided up above. There we go. There's our nice little cylinder, if you guys uh, make believe good enough. There we go. Okay. We have our cylinder there. Hopefully you guys see it. It's that darker, that darker um, uh, blue sort of uh, soda can that's uh, right in between everything, really. Okay. So let me highlight the things that we want to take a look at, right? So Remember how I said it's from A to B. So it's this region that's right here that we're trying to revolve around the y-axis, right? Does that make sense? This is the region that we're trying to revolve around the y-axis. That'll give us our outside shape, right? And the way that we find the volume of that thing as we revolve it around is that thick blue sort of soda can that you guys see in the middle there, okay? When we revolve that around the y-axis, that has a volume. If we take all of those volumes, uh, add them all together, we get the total volume, right? And uh, that's what gets us the volume, a good approximation for the volume of a shape itself, right? Okay, so now let's go ahead and dissect this a little bit, right? So if you guys remember, I gave this a thickness. If you guys remember that thickness right there, right, was going to be my delta x, right, which ends up turning into my dx, right? Notice that there's a height that's attached to it. So this height right here, right? That is dictated by my f of x, by my function itself. I forgot to write in the function here. So let me actually draw it in purple so it stands out a little bit. No, yeah, purple. So I'm running out of colors. There we go. So that right there is my f of x. So the height is dictated by that f of x, right? And the one thing that is sort of missing, right, is sort of a radius. How far out did we have to go, right? How far out did we have to go to get to my soda can, to get to my one little soda can, right? So that was going to be my r, right? And that radius is dictated by x. So then that means, right, that the area of this uh, cylindrical shell, OK, if we sort of sliced it down one of the edges and just completely unwrapped it, right, the volume for that soda, sh for that soda can, the volume for that soda can was going to be 2 pi r. Let me write that a little smaller, actually, v, 2 pi r right, times a height, 
times my delta x, right? And if we do it for this particular one, right, we have v is 2 pi, my r is x, that's how far out we went, times h, my height, which is dictated by the f of x, and that turns into times dx. That's where we get this statement up here. And there you have it. There's all three of the methods for Calc 2 for how to find a volume, OK? Um, the first one, the first two, right? And hopefully you guys see that they're fairly simple, right? They're fairly simple to sort of pick out, right? The third one, the shell method, that's the one that's a little bit uh, harder to sort of uh, dissect, right? But uh, it's all there, right? It's not too much more than some basic geometry, OK? Uh, and some experience. Cool? OK. So uh, one thing I do want to mention uh, before we keep going, uh, the, the integral, I mean, this table that I just made, right? I did it uh, for various functions, right? Uh, and all of these were dx. Notice that all of these, right, we were doing it with respect to the x variable, right? There is a similar table, right, if we want to do stuff with respect to the y variable, if you want to do stuff dy, okay? Um, and the pictures all sort of uh, fall about just like these. Okay, the only difference is instead of going, you know, up and down or left or right, you switch. Them. That's it. Okay. Um, but the one thing I do want to mention here, right, is this phrase down here that, um, you know, even though the table is helpful, right, there is no substitute. Really, there is no substitute uh, to drawing or sketching the shape as best you can for your computational process. Okay. Um, don't skimp on uh, the detail that you can provide uh, for your drawing, okay? Don't skimp out on the exactness, right? Try to be as meticulous as possible. I can't stress this enough. Um, this is a very helpful skill to have, uh, not only for this uh, these couple of sections, right? Uh, but later when you get into Calc 3 and uh, linear algebra in our Math 250 course, okay? Be very meticulous with your drawing, OK? Don't skip out on the detail, OK? So now, uh, I want to do one example for everybody, OK? Uh, I want to go ahead and show everybody how to set it up, like how the setup happens, right? Uh, this is going to end up being a integral, right, that we can't solve using our current methods. OK, but we can still solve it sort of using our calculator. Right. The more important thing that I want everybody to see is how to sort of go about solving it. OK. So uh, find the volume of the shape modeled by f of x equal one over uh, x squared plus one over uh, zero to two rotated about our x axis. So um, let me go ahead and start by doing the shape. OK. Here we go again, the yellow arrows. One day, one day I'll get out of it. Okay, I'm gonna slap an X and a Y down. There we go. Okay, so I slapped an X and a Y down. I'm going to try my very best to try to draw this shape. And I want it from zero to two. So the area that I want to revolve, right? So you guys can see that already is all this. Is all this little bit right here. Okay, so that's the thing I'm going to try to draw right now. So it's going to be from zero to one. I'm going to choose one to be up here. I'm going to do one, two. So this thing is going to be, let me switch to a blue. Oh, too early. Right, and this is going to be a plus one. This is going to be. I'm going to go ahead and do a minus one here, just to show sort of 
where the shape is supposed to be going and it's supposed to be doing something like this. There we go. Yeah. That looks a little better. Okay. So hopefully you guys see how this is looking really. Uh, one and two. We see our region, right? Okay. Uh, and we want to revolve this around the X axis. So this is going to be this. I'm going to that way. Right. So this one actually looks sort of like the, you know, the best description I can give you, right? Is sort of like a Hershey's kiss, but with the top end sort of chopped off. Got it? Okay. Um, I'm going to try to draw the shape, right? I'm going to try to give this thing some 3Dness to show us sort of what we're looking at here. There you go. So now, hopefully you guys see something here, okay? This shape is easily found. If we wanted to find the volume of this shape right here, we can go ahead and use uh, the disk method to find this shape, okay? The disk method, if you do it with, with this, um, uh, if you do it with the shape, easily solvable, easily solvable. And I'll let you guys try that out on your own, okay? But for this section, what I want to do is I want to show you guys all how to do it by the cylindrical shell method, okay? So that means I'm going to try to find the volume of the shape, okay? Um, I'm going to try to find the volume of this shape, but using soda cans, basically, concentric soda, soda cans, right? Okay. In order to do that, I need to draw my cylinder somehow, okay? So if you guys see my cylindrical shells, it's going to be best if they're going to be sideways cylindrical shells. So going this way and that way. Does that make sense? So on this on their side rather than standing up. Okay. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to draw a cylindrical shell here. I'm going to give it a thickness here and I'm going to go ahead and let me undo that. Let me do a skinnier pen. There we go. Here's our cylindrical shell right there. And let's go ahead and go down. You go ahead and do, don't judge me. Whoa. Let me do the outside one first, yeah? Outside one, inside one, and I said I'm trying here. You see, you guys, you guys see the soda can that's there. Okay, and now I'm going to actually try to shade it in nice and dark there. Try the best you can. They like said, I do want to see an attempt. I do want to see an attempt. Uh, but I'm. Um, not going to be too concerned with how exact you can make it. I know all of you guys can't completely draw. I know that this is in an art class. Um, I know this is probably, for many of you, uh, the very first time that you're actually trying to draw something like this, right? Trying to do a 3D sort of thing uh, freehand, right? Just try the best you can, okay? So here's my cylindrical shell, okay? Notice how it's side to side in this case, right? Uh, so we can see that we have a radius. We have, wanna go from the middle to the outside here, right? Here's my R. We have some sort of height, right? That's my H, right? And we have this thickness that's right here for the, for, um, we have our thickness there for the cylindrical shell, right? But the question is, like the other ones, uh, the ones that we did before, right? The soda cans, right, were sort of uh, standing up. They were up and down, right? This soda can is side to side. And the reason why it's side to side is because we are trying to do it over the x axis. Okay? 
we're trying to revolve this over the x-axis. So what we need to do is we need to change the variables of integration uh, for our uh, function so that we can integrate this using the theory that we just built up, right? So the way that we do that is this. Uh, this function, we're going to try to get it right now, it's y in terms of x, right? But we're going to try to flip it. We're going to try to make it x in terms of y. So the way that we're going to do that, we know that the y is going to be x squared plus 1, right? So uh, we can do x squared plus 1 is equal to 1 over y. Uh, so then x squared is uh, y minus 1 over, oops, sorry, so 1 minus y over y, which gets us x is equal to the square root of 1 minus y over y. This is the thing that we're about to use. This is now, uh, this is now our function that we're going to use uh, for our integration. We don't need this one anymore, right? We don't need that one anymore. So when we do this integral, right? Notice that we change the variables of integration before, right? If you take a look, this is zero to two that we were talking about before. That was referring to x variables, right? Now we need to switch them to the y variable. We're doing it uh, off of the y axis this time, right? So that is going to be, if you take a look in our picture, this is one of the reasons why we need a good picture is now we're doing it from uh, zero to one on the y axis. So that changes our integral a little bit. So to set up this integral, right? Uh, uh, actually, before we do that, before we set up the integral, now that we have all the bits here, right? Uh, let's fill in the r and the h. That's what I wanted to do. Uh, the r, the radius here, right? We, we can see that that's based off of our y variable, right? So now this is going to be the y. And the height now is going to be uh, dictated by the x equal the square root 1 minus y over y. OK? Hopefully, you guys see that height now, right? And now we can see that the thickness, right, is going to be a dy, right, which is going to turn into our dy. OK? Let's go ahead and do our integral now. So the integral is going to be Keep this in mind now. We're doing it with respect to y, with, the, with respect to the vertical variable now, the, the y variable, right? Uh, but the equation is still the same. It's going to be a 2 pi, right, uh, times our y variable, right? So that's going to be times y times our uh, gy dy. OK, from 0 to 1. So integral Whoa. from 0 to 1, uh, 2 pi y times the square root of 1 minus y over y. And it's equal to the integral from 0 to 1, 2 pi. And if you reduce this all nicely, you get this square root y, 1 minus y, dy. And I forgot the dy here. So this is the integral that we actually have to do. OK? Now, notice how the setup didn't change. OK? I still needed my picture, right? I, the picture sort of drove how this equation was sort of derived, right? And I needed it in order to get the specifics to get this thing right here. OK? Now, uh, like I said at the beginning of this problem, if you do this problem by um, if you do this problem by a uh, uh, washer method, right, uh, from two days ago, absolutely easy, absolutely solvable, OK? If you do it using uh, cylindrical shells, you get this right here. And unfortunately, this integral, we cannot solve, at least not 
using what we currently have, right? So this right here, that integral, I'm going to write that down so that uh, it's it's spelled out, right? It's not solvable. So let me write it. So this integral, the one in the green, is not solvable using our current techniques. We don't have any method for us to solve this at all yet, OK? Uh, we will learn the techniques for this later, OK? But there is a big but here. Um, we still can compute this. Uh, and we're going to do that by our integral calculator, um, this one right here. So technically, we just need to solve this integral that's right here, the one in the green, right? So I can go ahead and delete that, all of that stuff, and I can put in 2 pi, right, times the square root of y, uh, 1 minus y, oops, x, and x. There we go. We can find this integral anyway using our calculator. And this is going to be the integral from 0 to 1, right? 2 pi. I'm just going to write it down here. y, 1 minus y dy. I'm going to forget my dy. is going to be 2.4674. This is as far as we can get. We can at least set it up and compute it, right? We can't solve it outright using the techniques we have, but we can get an answer for it, OK? And this brings up a good point. Uh, now that you have three different techniques for how to solve the volume of a shape, um, it is up to you to sort of figure out which one's the best option. Sometimes some options are very easy. Sometimes some of them are very difficult. Uh, but in all of the shapes that I'm going to give you throughout this class, uh, you can go ahead and choose whichever one uh, best suits your needs. OK, like this, like this example showed, right? Uh, if I did this using disk method, very simple, very easy. Uh, I invite you all to try this out. OK, do it by disk method. OK, and the answer is going to be very, very simple. OK, but if you do it by um, a cylindrical shell method, like the one that I just did here, we can set it up, but we can't solve it using what we currently know. Okay. So uh, that's part of uh, uh, that's part of you know doing calculus problems like this. It's up to you now to figure out sort of uh, what's the best best method to solve whatever shape you're you're dealing with. Okay. And that's exactly what I want you guys to try out in these next two examples. So uh, quick check two, I'm going to have you guys do odds and evens. Okay. Uh, these two are shapes uh, that I want you guys to choose just any, try to find the volume, right, um, for these uh, shapes, but use whatever method you want. Okay. Uh, what I want everybody to do in particular for this first one, right, do non-cylindrical method. So non-cylinder. OK, try to do this without using the cylinder method. OK, so washer method, uh, a disk method, uh, use one of the other methods to find this shape, the volume for this shape. OK, and what I want everybody to do after that Quick check three. Now I want you to do it using cylinder method. Okay. It's the same. It, it, you, for both of these, you should get the same answer. You should get the same answer. Okay. One, you'll see, is much difficult than the other. Okay. 
Um, and they're not always matching in terms of difficulty. So uh, in one of these, uh, cylinder method is much simpler, right? Uh, and in one of these, the disk method is much simpler. So keep that in mind, okay? But I want you to uh, try out both methods, okay? Uh, so moving on, okay? There's one type of volume that I haven't shown you guys yet. And that's when it's sort of offset, when the center is not sort of one of the X or the Y axes, okay? So, and that's the one that I wanna cover with this one right here. So. I want to sketch the region bounded by the given curve, right? And find the volume of the solid that's obtained by rotating the region about that specified line. And I want to use specifically the shell method uh, to do it, okay? So the function that I'm going to do is this one right here. Uh, F of X is equal to X minus one plus one from zero to one. And I'm going to rotate it about the line X equal negative two, okay? So, I am going to, let me first of all, draw this shape out so you guys can see what I'm talking about. My X equal negative two line, that's this. Okay. I have my, I have my sort of my curve. I see my F of X, that's this thing, right? And I want it from zero to one. So I'm gonna go ahead and sort of slice this down here. Place this down here so I can see my region. This is the region that I want to. This is the region that I want to. Uh, this is the region that I'm talking about, right? This is the region that the problem is talking about. Okay. And I want to revolve this. I want to revolve this region right here about the line y equal negative two. I want to do this. I'm going to spin it this way. OK, so uh, let me go ahead and scroll down a little bit. Let me zoom out a little bit because I need to slap down some X and Y axes. I'm going to do black line. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and do another one right here. I'm going to bring this up a little bit so I can have a little bit of, of space right below it so I can add the depth that I need, okay? Now, uh, here comes the toughy part, uh, trying to draw this shape, okay? So if you sort of think about it, right, we're trying to, the, the middle line, the thing that, the center is our X equal two line, right? That dotted red line that we have there. I want to revolve this around that line. So the other end of my shape is going to be at around x equal four. So I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and do one, two, three, four. So this is my four. Uh, this is my two, right? I'm trying here. I think I need to make them a little better spaced apart. So one, two, three, four. Here's my two. Here's my four, okay? That red line is this right here. Okay, my region, let me scooch that over a little bit, so it's halfway. My region is this bit, so I'm gonna go ahead and do to two, so one, two, one, my region is this strip right here. It's going to go boom right there. And I'm going to go ahead and shade it in just like I have it above. Just so we can match up the shapes. All right, here comes the fun part. This exact same shape is going to be on the other end. That's going to go up to here about, and all the way up to here. My shape is going to go like that. I think that went too high. About to there, right? So these two are exactly the same region, sort of like mirrored, sort of, yeah, mirrored, you know, shapes. 
you guys can take a look at that. You guys can see it, right? And I want to revolve it around that line y equal uh, or x equal to, right? So here we go. Here's my shape. So there's going to be a, I'm going to draw a dotted line here, dotted line there. It's going to be a, Something like that. And then there's going to be a, sometimes these pictures become much easier or much clearer because of the shape itself. So let me draw in the entire, draw in the side walls. There you go. Hopefully you guys see what this is looking like. This is looking like sort of picture like a little chalice that's in between, right? Uh, and uh, that chalice -y area is just empty. Okay. There is our shape. There is our shape. Okay. So now, hopefully you guys see the cylinders, right? I'm going to go ahead and draw in the cylinders here so it make, becomes a little clear what I'm really going to be looking at, right? I'm going to draw a nice little thickness, and then I'm going to drop this down. So I have, there we go. And same spot on the other side, and I'm going to drop this down here. Like I said, you don't have to be precise, but be as meticulous for yourselves as possible, right? Be as meticulous as you can be. Be as meticulous as you can be. I'm going to thicken up the line a little bit. Maybe I can. Yeah, there we go. There we are. And then the last lip that goes sort of across here. There we go. Hopefully you guys see our little soda can there. So that's the soda can. That's the random soda can that we're going to be using, right? To sort of um, uh, give us all of the numbers, all the things to formulate our integral, right? Okay. So if you take a look, right, this soda can has a height. It has some height. And that height is dictated by my f of x. If you guys notice, if you guys remember, right? Remember that this right here, uh, too thick. This right here is my is dictating is this is dictating my height right here, which is f of x, right? Okay, so this is my f of x here. Okay, we have a thickness. Notice that the thickness of this uh, cylinder, right? is my delta x, right? That's going to end up turning into my dx, right? So all that's left now, here's the tricky part, OK? That we want this distance right here, because this is, we need that radius that goes outward. We need that thickness, right? We need that distance, OK? And that distance, right? And actually, I'm going to go the other way. The other way is a little clearer to see when you go out this way. That distance right here is going to be my radius, right? And it's going to be uh, 2 minus x. That is going to be my radius, OK? So now. This is where we're, I don't want to say deviate from our uh, formulation of the cylinder, right? But we're going to step back and we're going to do this version of it. 2 pi times r times h times delta x. We have to step back to this one, OK? And this is what we need to do if we get these offset rotations. So notice how this one. 
was based off of this line, uh, x equal minus two, right? We were rotating it around x equal minus two. Because of that sort of offset from the x or the y axis, we got to do it this way, okay? So uh, that's the reason why we have a good picture. Let's go ahead and combine everything to make sure that everything fits in here, right? We know what r is. That's going to be r2 minus x. My height is given by my function, right? So it's going to be times uh, x minus 1 quantity squared plus 1. And my delta x becomes my dx. OK, now the strip that we are concerned with, right, our limits of integration are still going to be from here to here. And that's going to be from 0 to 1. So we have enough now to combine everything and get our answer. Uh, this is going to be the integral from 0 to 1 of this thing right here. 2 pi 2 minus x, x minus 1 quantity squared plus 1 dx, okay? I'm going to expand this little bit right here. So you guys can solve this however you need to. Um, I'm going to go ahead and expand uh, like how I see it, how I like to do it. 2 pi 2 minus x, uh, x minus 1 squared plus 1. That's going to be, two, uh, whoops the x squared minus 2x plus 2. Okay. And if you expand this all out, right, integral from 0 to 1, 2 pi uh, minus x to the third plus 4x squared minus 6x plus 4 dx, dx. Since I'm still doing this, right, with respect to the x variable, OK? This integral now becomes 2 pi. I'm going to go ahead and do the integral now. Minus x to the fourth over 4 uh, plus 4x four cubed over 3 minus 6x squared over 2. I'm going to put that in parentheses, that one, too plus 4x evaluated from 0 to 1, OK? If you do the math, you do the algebra for it, uh, you're going to get 2 pi times uh, 25 over 12, if you do the common denominators and all that stuff. And this should be 13.08 and change. Dot, 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 dot. Okay. Now, uh, just for kicks and giggles, just to make sure that we did everything correctly, I'm going to go ahead and double check my answer uh, with our definite integral calculator. Okay. So we know what the integral's got to be, right? Uh, let me go ahead, go back, 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 back. And I'm going to go ahead and type in this one. I'm going to go ahead and type in this version right here. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and open up my Desmos calculator. There we go. Uh, 2 pi 2 minus x, x squared minus 2x plus 2. And I still want it from 0 to 1. There we go, 13.08. Thirteen point zero eight. We're good. Okay. So, the last bit for this section. Um, I keep on bringing up uh, the fact that you know. Well, I hate when my computer does that. There we go. Um, I keep on bringing up this fact that you know in Calc three, in Calc three, and in Calc two at the very beginning end of this this. Uh, you know, a 
finding volumes here. Um, I keep on bringing up this fact that you have to get good at drawing. You have to uh, you have to get comfortable with at least drawing something, right? Uh, draw your shape. Uh, it'll help uh, organize your thoughts. It'll help organize your math. It'll help um, uh, pick out you know any discrepancies that you have, right? But always the question comes along. Um, two questions that come along: which method do you use, right? And the other one is, well, how I, how do I know if I'm drawing my shape correctly? Okay. Uh, the answer to both of those is experience. So you just got to try try them out, try them out as many as you can. Okay. Um, that goes for both questions: which method is best, and how uh, do I know if I'm sketching this correctly? Okay. Just experience, experience, experience. Okay. Uh, as I pointed out before, you can use any one of the methods to solve for uh, the volume of a shape. You can use any of the methods, OK? Um, now, the other one, the other thing that I want to sort of um, provide at least some direction for is, how do I know if I'm sketching the, the my shape correctly? Unfortunately, there's not very many 3D calculators out there that will actually do the calculation for you, right? Um, there are a couple uh, that will at least provide you something that may give you a shape, okay? It still requires your verification, right? It still requires you to, um, it still requires you to at least be able to picture it in your mind, right? Um, there isn't one good spot uh, for a 3D calculator or a 3D visualization. Um, for any one of these shapes, unfortunately, okay? I do have, though, some honorable mentions, and I've written them down here, okay? Uh, as a basics, um, as a basic graphing calculator, Desmos does perfectly well, right? Um, and then I have three more from below that. Uh, there's a Wolfram Alpha's Solid of, Solids of Revolution. Uh, I put that, um, I put the web page for them there. Uh, there's another um, website, math4u.net. They have their own, okay? And then GeoGebra has the Solids of Revolutions grapher as well, okay? Um, none of these three, uh, there are some of these three that will do uh, some of the volumes that I've been showing you guys, and then some of the other ones, it won't. Okay, it's, I don't want to say a hit and miss, right? Uh, but it's not sort of a, it's, it's, it's not your golden dagger here, okay? It's not, not, none of these will be the one size fits all. Uh, in any case, right, just make sure that you're able to uh, visualize this shape. It still requires your, um, your sort of identification and you're sort of thinking about it to make sure it's the right one, okay? Uh, if you use any of these uh, websites, I highly recommend that you use this on something that has a bigger screen. I would, uh, I would want to say no phones and no tablets. I don't think the tablets or your phone have processors strong enough to be able to uh, sort of handle the three D ness of it. Okay, you're going to need something that has, you know, a Sort of like a bona fide processor, uh, one of the maybe uh, you know a higher end tablet, um, or a flat out laptop or desktop computer. Okay, um, I know that this is uh, this is a PDF uh, for the notes, right? So if you go over to the to the right here, I've got the the same sort of uh, spots, same sort of websites here uh, at the edge. So if you look at this on a computer screen, you'll still be able to click on them. OK, so you don't have to sit there and type this into a, a web page okay, or type it into the browser. OK. All right. I know this is going to be a tough section for a lot of people. OK. Um, try it. I have my office hours. I have my Friday hours. Please come visit me. OK. Uh, and I am checking my um, I am checking my emails uh, fairly regularly. OK. Uh, besides that, uh, I'm all done for this section. Happy studying.